please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I thought instead of doing an exhibition of stupid people, we'll do that tomorrow instead, we'd go and look in on Tess Holiday because we haven't looked at her for a little while and it's always nice to go from time to time over to the realm of TikTok to see the cancer she spews from her car or her bedroom and sometimes her holiday stuff. Occasionally she likes to partake in the TikTok, well, trivial matters of replying to nasty little comments. I call them nasty little comments, they're just comments but because of her interpretation of it, and many in fact that do this, it's often considered a nasty little comment. We have a number of different areas we're going to navigate, whether it be face related, weight related, size related, actually I guess everything's related to the weight. It's the umbrella term for all the subcategories. We'll go to the first subcategory, shall we? One thing y'all need to know about a big girl, okay, is that the face card will never ever decline okay ever now i didn't initially know what this meant i had thought perhaps it was a riff on the fact that some people can't gain access to apps on the apple phone without using their face id you know the the scanner thing yeah that right instead of your thumbprint or your finger if you're a loser but no this is actually a slang term for an individual whose face because of their size will never diminish you're right because generally when it's inflated, unless it starts to suffer a slow puncture, which is what we call time, your face does retain much of the youth because it's got that walrus blubber. Insulation. Think of it like cavity insulation or cellotex if you're more modern about it. But to find someone attractive for a face card to not be declined, one has to be interested in the rest of the product. When your head is uh, lacking a neck to support it, one could argue there is nothing remotely attractive because you're missing key parts of your anatomy, or you're suffering from severe spinal compression, which makes you look even worse. I'm trying not to be too harsh. Beauty is after all in the eye of the beholder. I just think anyone that finds someone this large attractive needs to get their eyes tested by having them scooped out with a spoon first. The face card is gonna be lethal, okay? You can call us big back bitch, you can call us a whale, you can call us fat, you can call us whatever you can think of. But what you can't say is that the face card is ugly, okay? Because it's not, it's not, okay? So um, just remember that, okay, bye. When you post content like this on the internet, it is obviously done as bait. It is obviously done because you know now people are pedantic enough or chronically online enough that they're going to tell you you're wrong and then they'll call you all of those names. Then they'll get creative, which in turn, because it's bait, gives you the greatest opportunity to take those comments and make something empowering in response. So you'll sit on your bed, on your couch, in your car, because moving is completely out of the equation, and you'll respond to them, or do some quirky little jig with your upper body, upper body being shoulders, hands, your arms might move, but it's unlikely, and your face pulling some expression to dab on them haters. Are we still allowed to say that? Is that okay? The reality is, you have to be found attractive by someone, now you have a partner. So ultimately your face card is redundant because you've got someone. For others, it is not the same. And a lot of the time people are tokenized based on physical attributes that others find attractive. It becomes superficial. In fact, the battle you're fighting, you treat it as if it is not superficial, but actually you're basing it entirely on something superficial. Because if you went to the gym, it wouldn't be this bad. On to the next video. Imagine the uproar it would cause if plus size, thick, curvy girls got out there and loudly and proudly and very wrongly shouted that skinny folks don't deserve to have clothing. Just a question, are there people doing this for those who are super morbidly obese? Or do we not see anyone doing this because a lot of those that buy their clothes for larger sizes go to Torrid? You know, the company you used to promote because you collaborated with them. For years, in fact. I know this because I've got one of your videos on it later. I might make sure that's next, just so I can point at your own hypocrisy. Which is what many did point out to you in the replies to this. If there are protests 
for super morbidly obese people, in your country of all places where the obesity rate is stupidly high, I would be very surprised. If it is an isolated incident in a place that perhaps preaches tolerance but actually doesn't act on tolerance, that is a local problem, as opposed to a national or international or global problem, planetary, maybe interstellar when we get to that stage. Imagine if we had cut all of the access to smaller bodied individuals having clothing and we took it all. I'm going to refrain from making an obvious food joke here because you're setting all these jokes up. I want to make them, but I also don't want to be demonetized for what could be considered hate speech, even though I think hate speech as an idea is nonsense. Insert the one or two people who will now say, Ah, now you've given me an opportunity. Redact you out absurd. I'm going to be put down. Shut up. You know who you are. You all have text. Don't. Focus on this video, please. Now, I would love to know what the inspiration for this particular video was, but within your content, I can't find it. And you're not replying to a comment, so I don't get it either. And we dressed and adorned ourselves however we wanted, at whatever budget we could imagine, and we said, ha ha ha, you guys get nothing. The fun thing there is, I don't think many people would object to seeing other people not with any clothes on, so your point doesn't resonate as well. It wouldn't resonate so well if they were of your size, because people don't want to see that. In fact, we want you to wear as much as possible. You can be body positive if you like, but body positive has become fat acceptance. I'm not going to accept it, because I like to go to the gym, and I like fitting into clothes of a reasonable size. And I say reasonable because that's subjective. The funny thing here is, you wouldn't have this issue that you claim to be victim of, like many that would inspire your video in the first place, if you actually put any effort into not being so selfish. That's one of the reasons many people look down at those who are much larger, because it usually comes from a place of, ah, but this has happened in my life and I have all these problems, and then continues to scoff food and expect everyone else to cater to them. This does not resonate, because while we are, all living creatures, quite selfish, humanity especially, you all suck, you sometimes need to be better than that. You're not being able to look after your body is proof of that. Imagine the uproar, but because it's reversed and it has been happening, to the plus size girlies and the curvy community for so long. This is demonstrably not true. Many retailers now, and there are specialized retailers especially, cater towards larger people. You just want it to be all retailers. Everywhere, every walk of life, access 100% guaranteed. The problem you have there is, supply and demand says, eh, nah. And because being fat and being plus size is tied to morality and to health, where does it leave us? The same place it has always left us. Begging for a crumb, and you guys crying and hollering. Yet again, I have to point out this is a load of nonsense. You worked, collaborated with Torrid, you've collaborated with H&M, you know this is not true. You spent years championing plus size and fat acceptance. You yourself in this video separated the two, in fact. Clearly, they are not mutually exclusive when you want it to not be, to drive home a point of additional labels. Because of my many years of covering Amberlynn Reed, I know for a fact you can get clothes any size, even in places like Target and Walmart, some of the biggest retailers in your country. Now, the Torrid thing that I've mentioned a few times now, we're going to cover that part now where someone did leave a comment about it, and you respond. You're right, I did. And that was, gosh, like nine years ago. It was a long time. And at that time, I was excited to work with them. I didn't love everything that I wore. I voiced that numerous times. And a lot of these brands don't like it when you are loud and when you are vocal. Of course they don't. Because the entire point of being a brand ambassador or a collaborator is for you to shine a positive light onto them. If what you do runs contrary to their positive message, or under the guise of you being positive but from a different light, you are seen as a unnecessarily dissenting opinion, and inherently negative to their brand. Whether anyone likes Torrid or not is not my business, but you did promote them for a long time, you crapped on them, 
and they stop working with you. Those wells of opportunity dry up because you can't stop writing checks with your mouth. Is that more a fat acceptance, body positive issue? Or is that a Tess Munster issue, Tess Holiday issue? The reason that they make the skull prints and the safety pins and the cold shoulders and the florals and yada yada is because they believe that their core fan base, which is like Midwest whatever, um, that that's what they love and that's what they wear and that's what they buy. Then it would be right to assume that that is in fact what they make and why they make it because it appeals to their core market. They haven't lost their core values apparently. Something which I'm sure rubs you up the wrong way because you want to wear less. You want to show as much as you can show all the cute little dainty things that Tess Holiday can wear. If, as you often say it, being slimmer than you is an unrealistic body standard, certainly the skinny ones, or what you determine to be skinny which is actually average in size and shape, it is unrealistic for every company to also cater to your every single whip. It really is. Insert R, but the customer is always right. The full quote is the customer is always right in matters of taste. Since they're catering to their market and doing well from it, it would be right to assume that you're wrong. But I think where the disconnect is a lot of these brands don't realize, <laughs> I think they realize, they don't care, that we are buying it because that is what is available. And if you are in the Midwest or uh, another location where you do not have easily accessible stores that you can just go in and shop, then obviously you're going to shop at whatever is local and near to you, and you're gonna buy whatever is available. Ha, huh, I can debunk this. Amberlynn Reed for years when she was doing non-tent in her flat, she would buy her stuff online and have it delivered because it turns out you can buy your cute outfits and have them brought to your door without you ever having to leave your home. There may not be as many shops in your local area for your size. I totally understand that, but it turns out you can do it online, you loser. It is so much harder for plus size people and everybody to cultivate and have their own styles when we are not given the same opportunities as other people to create our own style at a budget that is appropriate for a lot of us. There is no such thing as individuality anymore. There are too many communities, far too many fashion trends. Please don't try me. Too much tribalism, it's been going on for far too long, okay? Even introverts and incels, separate of course, have their own fashion trends that they abide. Now, the last thing I want to look at is the fact that you have been challenged on your size by three separate people and you've responded three separate times. So let's see how you handle the criticism that you say you're size 24 and people in your audience do not agree with you. Oh no, you guys, I was just exposed. I am so sorry. Um, I'm actually a size 69, get into it. Um, I don't know how to apologize. I'm, I just want to say first, um, get into it. Yeah get into into it um but yeah it won't happen again i promise i promise um i love that to make the camera seem like you fit in frame you have to hold your arm out and up as far as possible unrealistic unsustainable as well your arm will undoubtedly well struggle yeah video number two i just woke up and i am so excited that everybody is so obsessed about me lying about my size because this video that everyone's commenting on is already almost at a million views so please keep debating please keep telling me i'm disgusting um also can we get into the lighting on my besties toilet i mean have you ever rachel this toilet lighting is beautiful it is stunning now we can all recognize sarcasm. We've seen it so far. If it didn't stand out or wasn't obvious to you, chances are you lack that key fundamental part of the human anatomy, a funny bone. Of course, I understand. There are queries about the size of Tess Holiday, who does say in multiple videos, which is why she's responding to them, because it's easy free content, that she is in fact size 24. And the views on these were in the hundreds of thousands. So she made at least two to three pence on them. Her videos don't average this much these days. She did one more video though, debunking apparently. I'm gonna insert a disclaimer. To an extent, she did debunk it, but it can be argued she didn't. And now I want to sit back and relax and enjoy my evening. 
when all of a sudden I hear this agitating, grating voice. In the comments to this video, there were many that said, first of all, that had an elastic waist, meaning that it could be the correct size, but also stretches out beyond it, which it did. The XL marker doesn't apply in all countries. In fact, different body standards and different sizes are important. But it can be said that based on what you've provided, you have you have thwarted the internet. You have debunked them. You've shown them. Congratulations. You should be very proud of yourself for being a dainty size 24. For your height, that is slightly alarming, but who am I to judge, right? As a final thing, if you would decline her face card, tell me in the comments and tell me why. Gotta drive up that engagement, right? Thanks for being here, guys. See you tomorrow.